December 21, 2012. That was the last time in which people around the world collectively thought the world might actually come to an end. This theory was based on a supposed Mayan prophecy that proclaimed an Armageddon was coming. At the end of the 13th Bakhtun of the Mayan calendar. This created a modern obsession for the Mayan culture like no other. An obsession that turned global when we learned about the astonishingly accurate measurements of time the ancient Mayans had made. Lending credibility to this conspiracy theory, a string of natural disasters with intensities not seen in recent times struck our modern civilization and caught us very much unprepared. However, once the supposed date of this Armageddon had passed, many of the doomsday conspiracies quickly faded from memory. Though for some, many questions remained unanswered. Had the Mayans made a mistake? Had their science been flawed or was it our very own science that failed us? In our culture Maya, the cycle that ended, that says the 21, does not agree with our nuestro cycle. Among the many misconceptions of the Mayan calendar are this one. This artifact shown here is not a Mayan calendar at all. It's not even Mayan. In fact, it's Aztec. Compelled by these same questions, a holistic science author and filmmaker, Elizabeth Terriot, set out to shed light on these mysteries and to decode the Bakhtun. has been utilizing the night sky for navigation and prediction of seasonal change since prehistoric times. Early man saw in the stars the gods that ruled their lives. These gods' recurring visits created our circular vision of time that prevailed in ancient cultures. In the third millennium BC, the Sumerians created a lunar calendar of 354 days divided into 12 months. This was a very good approximation when compared to the current lunar year of 354.3670 days. The Sumerian astronomers noticed the sun cycle lasts actually 11 days longer than the lunar cycle. In this day and age, we have approximated our year as 365.2422 days known as the tropical or solar year, as measured by our orbit around the sun. So the gap between these two cycles was filled by adding in a 13th month, whenever it fits, thereby establishing the lunisolar calendar comprised of both entities. However, the solution was still inaccurate. The Sumerian calendar continued on in this way with the Hebrews who adopted it during their bondage in Babylon in the 6th century BC. The Hebrew count is geared towards a divine destiny, the arrival of the Messiah, and the restoration of paradise, thereby changing the ancient vision of circular time and replacing it with a linear conception of time. In those years, the Greeks also utilized a lunisolar calendar of 354 days with an extra month. The Romans also occupied the Greek calendar of 354 days. When Julius Caesar assumes the throne, the distance between the lunar cycle and the solar is almost three months. So the emperor calls on an astronomer from Alexandria who recommends adopting the Egyptian year of 365.25 days. The astronomer Sosagenius' suggestion of reform would require the addition of 90 days to the Roman year 46 BC, but in so doing turned the first year of the Julian calendar into 
the year of confusion because this was the first year that now had 445 days. The calculations of this astronomer had only an error of 11 minutes and 9 seconds per year. This calendar prevailed until the year 1582 when then Pope Gregory XIII discovered that there is now a gap of 10 days between the cycles of the sun and the moon, and then decided to correct the Julian calendar of that year by eliminating the days between the 4th and 15th of October of that year. He decreed the years ending in two zeros, whose numbers are not divisible by four, are not leap years. This correction created the Gregorian year with an inaccuracy of one day every 3,300 years. At last. First, I will meet with Abuela Polinario, president of the Confederation of Mayan Councils. He has the authority and the wisdom inherited for centuries to guide us in our search. The Mayan Abuelo is a sage, an individual who has inherited the ability to transmit the knowledge generated by generations of Mayans. Estamos en este asentamiento maya llamado Quiriguá. Quiriguá quiere decir la última reunión, la última cena de diferentes pueblos mayas de todo Mesoamérica. Cuando hacían sus grandes ceremonias, sus grandes eh, celebraciones del tiempo, tenían que codificar, escribir o archivar el ciclo. Eso es lo que está en esa estela. ¿En qué tiempo fue? ¿Qué es lo que hicieron? ¿Y para qué lo dejaron? Los calendarios es donde se encuentra la codificación de nuestra vida, donde está toda nuestra genética, donde está la creación de todo el cosmos, el microcosmos que somos nosotros. Ahí está codificado todo. Cuando el ser humano se relaciona con la naturaleza, es muy fácil sacar cálculos matemáticos son cosas que fue muy fácil porque era una práctica de vida. The Mayans used a mathematical system that was common to all Mesoamerica. This territory inhabited by the Olmecs since 2500 BC. The Olmecs are also known as the mother culture. The Olmecs give rise to social structure in that entire region. This stone writing is of a ball game. It also contains their calendar system and their math. These advances were inherited by the Mayans and other Mesoamerican cultures centuries later. The math is based on the number 20. Represented in these points are units one through four. The bar represents the number five. Combined symbols represent the number 19 and actually make up 20. Because the Mayans had counted from the number zero. The first 20 numbers are also associated with gods. 
The first 13 of them are the most important ones. It's amazing, the almost organic understanding that the Mayans have of mathematics, a mastery, which also led them to conceive of the number and the concept of zero, the number that many brilliant civilizations never thought of. In the quest to learn more about Maya mathematics and its relationship to spirituality, I speak with an expert on a subject, Abuelo Lorma. El cero para nosotros los mayas tiene un valor y no como en otras culturas que significa cero, que es nada, es vacío y eso. Entonces, por ejemplo, en muchas de las estelas se ap aparece una flor. Es la flor calendárica que le llamamos y quiere decir cero. ¿Por qué una flor, verdad? A la, a la placenta, en muchos idiomas mayas se le dice flor. Kotzig es el principio de... The Mayan zero is also commonly depicted with a seashell that symbolizes creation and the spiral of time, the beginning and the infinite. These were complex mathematical achievements. They were a logical development of a civilizations deeply influenced by astronomical cycles. To these people, the numbers weren't just meaningless symbols, but they were the time and the universe bearers, living organisms of which we are part of. Los abuelos, como estaban bien conectados con toda la naturaleza, se internaban dentro de ellos y miraban el sol, miraban la luna, miraban las estrellas. Esos están en la garganta, están en los oídos, los ojos, en los órganos. Pero eso no es magia. Eso es un poder. Allí está escrito todo el movimiento y la composición de nuestro cerebro. Ese cerebro palpita. Y lo que está escrito es palpitaciones y esa palpitación tiene un sonido. Y ese sonido produce ondas. Y esas ondas se vuelven una canción, un canto. Following the words of the Abuela Polinario, a ceremony is performed. In this ritual, I am asked to search inside myself with the guidance of Don Miguel, a spiritual guide who performs the rites intended to purify my mind and my body. It is an honor to undergo this blessing. The Western scientific view governs our lives, linking our consciousness only to the physical evidence, as does the Gregorian calendar with time. Therefore, we have lost our inner world because we learn only a material perspective of things. To learn more about the connection between our inner world science and the Mayan calendars, we call upon Carlos Barrios. Carlos's work builds upon Apollinario and Lol Mai in the search. Por primera vez, la ciencia oficial está reconociendo lo que nosotros venimos diciendo. Si tú ves lo que te hablan los físicos cuánticos, estás oyendo parte del, de, de lo que es el conocimiento de los abuelos. Los abuelos mayas de siempre han dicho que la luz ha viajado en una espiral y ahora se dan cuenta con los aparatos actuales que la luz viaja en una forma espiral. Porque al final de cuentas, la espiral es la, es la forma de la creación, de la manifestación de la realidad. Entonces, nuestro ADN está conformado por una espiral, que es el, el espacio-tiempo, el Nacht, que es una macroespiral la relación de toda la, de la creación. The spiral the abuelos are talking about is the essential component of creation, which today is under study thanks to Fibonacci of the 13th century, where the foundation for this mathematical work began. By discovering the infinite sequence of natural numbers that start within zero and one, followed 
by the sum of two previous numbers. Although these numbers grow infinitely, the ratio between two consecutive draws ever closer to the golden number of B. We can combine the Fibonacci sequence and phi by drawing two squares of one unit per side connected by one side, then a square of two units per side above the previous two, then another of three units, and so on. By joining their verticals through quarters of circumference, we then get a spiral. The radius increases by a factor of phi every quarter turn. This spiral appears throughout all nature to be a coincidence. DNA molecules are spirals. Seashells are spirals. The structure of galaxies are spirals. And they are among so many other examples that are right before our eyes. Nosotros tenemos pues todo ese conocimiento de las vueltas de la espiral del tiempo y sabemos que a determinado momento una situación se repite, solo que con otros escenarios y otras energías. Entonces es muy fácil, si tú llevas un registro del pasado, poder determinar que va a suceder una situación muy similar, pero por supuesto similar. Mayan inscriptions also have spirals. The mathematics used to create the Mayan calendar also appear to be based on equations similar to the Fibonacci method. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 equals 20, and 20 times the next number in the series, 13, which is equal to 260 days in the Mayan's sacred calendar. El calendario sagrado es uno de los calendarios muy, muy importante porque es el que rige la vida de, los, uh, de, de la humanidad. No solo a, la, a las personas, sino a las plantas, a los animales y en sí a toda la naturaleza. Los días del uh, calendario sagrado son 20 días, combinado con 13 números. Después de llegar a 13, empieza uno nuevamente hasta 13 y así sucesivamente hasta completar el ciclo de 260. Y en el mundo maya, el calendario sagrado, el Cholquij, te da tu energía, tu aguachaquij, con la cual vos sabes quién sos, vos sabes para qué viniste, sabes qué habilidades y qué debilidades tenés y cómo orientar tu vida para una evolución. It is clear that the sacred calendar is more than just a measure of time. It is a critical guide for our survival here on Earth. This correlation between ancient knowledge and modern science is confirmed by the scientists at the Russian Institute of Space Research, who have confirmed that every 13 days, a solar wind from our sun produces geomagnetic storms that actually affect us directly. The flux of electrons and ions created by the solar storm has been proven to disturb our biological processes, causing heart conditions within the most susceptible of our population. The Mayans were extremely aware of their oneness with nature. In fact, they may have indicated this within their calculations in the Choki proving that our survival as a species is intertwined with that of our environment and that all of this is celestially influenced. ¿De dónde sale el número 13? Pues de las 13 coyunturas principales del ser humano. Porque aquí tienes una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce y trece. Ahí están las 13 coyunturas principales. ¿De dónde sale el número 20? Pues de los 10 dedos de las manos y los 10 dedos de los pies. Los de las manos van en relación con el sol, con la, con la energía cósmica y de los pies hacia la energía telúrica. Si nosotros hacemos una multiplicación de 20 por 13, vamos a tener 260, que ese es el tiempo de gestación del ser humano. El calendario 
y está en nosotros. No necesitamos ahora aparatos para sacar una medida de la tierra al sol, porque nosotros, los seres humanos, somos tan exactos porque estamos hechos de semejanza de toda la naturaleza. Actualmente estamos desconectados del tiempo, porque vivimos un calendario que nada tiene que ver de estas tierras. Solo se repite lo que dicen las universidades, las escuelas. Nunca se ha tomado en cuenta los verdaderos estudios que están escritos en las piedras. Son escritos que nos sirven para una mejor vida, para el tiempo en que estamos actualmente. Hablamos así porque para nosotros el calendario maya está en movimiento y cada vez se está agilizando. Lo sabemos cómo trabaja y cómo codifica diariamente a cada instante de acuerdo al sol, hacia la tierra o cualquier otro planeta tiene su influencia y lo estamos manejando en nuestra vida. The apparent movement of the sun during its annual journey that takes it around Earth was followed closely by Mayan astronomers focusing attention on the four positions that define the seasons. On the 20th and 21st of March, the sun reaches its zenith over the equator during the spring equinox. The summer solstice occurs when it reaches the northernmost point on the 21st and the 22nd of June. The sun then continues on its journey to the autumn equinox on the 20th and 21st of September, ending at its southernmost point on the 20th and 21st of December for the winter solstice. These solar positions regulated various social activities, mainly agricultural, so they were measured with a very specific calendar. El calendario HAP, que es el calendario agrícola o solar. Este es uh, eh, el calendario que tiene 365 días. Son 18 periodos de 20 días cada uno. Entonces 18 por 20 nos da 360. Hay un periodo de 5 días nada más. A este periodo de 5 días se le llama Guayep. El Guayep es un eh, periodo eh, en donde se agradece de todo lo que ha sucedido en el transcurso del año y eh, también es un momento en donde en el pasado, por ejemplo, se dejaba descansar las herramientas que la persona utilizaba todo el año. The Hab operates independently of the sacred calendar of 260 days. If we start the year with the day zero pop, the next day will be one pop, and the month ends with 19 pop. Then comes zero uo, and so on. They continue to do this infinitely. Podían leer las galaxias. Sabía en qué momento marcaba cierto tiempo para vivir bien, para vivir en balance y equilibrio con la naturaleza. Se escogía alimentos de acuerdo a los meses del calendario. Eh, se practicaba, por ejemplo, la, el despertar del sueño. O sea, se practicaba, por ejemplo, cantos. Se practicaban danzas. Se practicaba, por ejemplo, las prácticas con las medicinas maestras. <risa> And that is exactly what I did on this trip to the Yucatan Peninsula. I joined the abuelos during a ceremony in which they were making an offering to the universe. During the ceremony, the abuelos gathered candles and recited chants for the purpose of connecting the energy symbolizing the four corners of the universe. East, where the sun rises, is linked to the color red, representing fire and birth. The west, where the sun sets, is associated with black or blue, the decline and death. The north, to the right of the sun, is associated with the color white, life and air. The south, to the left of the sun, is linked to the color yellow, seeds, and wisdom. The 
connection between human beings and nature is fundamental to the life of the Maya. This is also reflected in the Mayan's calendar. Although experts do not agree on how the Mayans fit the hop into the solar year, a gathering consensus is emerging. Meanwhile, at the National University of Honduras, a scientific paper was published that proposed that they had discovered a perfect repeatable lunar cycle of 235 moons within a 19-year period. This new discovery was actually written in stone in the Copan thousands of years ago by the Maya. According to the Mayan ratio of 149 moons, equaling 4,400 days, a lunar month is equivalent to 29.5302 days, which multiplied by 235 moons gives us exactly 6,939.5973 days or 19 years. If we divide those 19 years by that equation of days, it gives us an average year length of 365.241963 days within a year. The Mayan calendar produced a result closer to the actual tropical year of 365.2422 days, a calculation far more accurate than the Julian and Gregorian calendars, which were developed a thousand years after the Mayan calendar had been created. La precisión, digamos, astronómica y matemática de los uh, calendarios es uh, increíblemente perfecto. Cada uno se puede utilizar independiente, sin embargo, son como engranajes. Cambia un día en uno de los calendarios, cambia automáticamente en todos. Así es como camina el engranaje del tiempo. Comienza por la matemática, con un respeto a un símbolo que es el bar, como el origen del ser humano. Entonces, comienza por el bar y luego la numeración. Entonces está el número y se va jalando de acuerdo al chotir, al chonquín. Así se va y va jalando los meses. A lot of people look at the representations you might see in popular magazines showing these gears, gear wheels of time, the Maya gears. Uh, you have the 13-day gear because they had numbers from 1 to 13, like we do 1 to 30 in a month. And then they have the 20 gear with the 20 days of the names. And the way we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so those two gears, the 13 and the 20, roll around the same way our seven days of the week roll around with 30. And they make the 260-day count, which is a very important fundamental Maya number because 260, which is 13 times 20, is also it incorporates the number of fingers and toes on a body. It incorporates the number of layers of heaven, which is 13 for the Maya. And it even incorporates the gestation period of the human female, which is very close to 260. Oh, and by the way, it incorporates eclipse cycles and Venus periods, but that's detail. The hob and the cholki can be joined as a gear forming the calendric wheel. Any given day in the calendric wheel, like five kimi for pop, consists of the number five and the day kimi of the cholki and the fourth day of the pop, the month of the hob. It's important to understand that using this system, it will take 73 rotations of the cholki and 52 rotations of the hob to repeat the same date. The calendric wheel is also associated with four directions of the cosmos, dividing the 52 years of the hob in four parts of 13 years. When this cycle is completed, it is a very special time for the Maya, who would put out all of the fires the night before and not relight them until the next morning. The significance of which cannot be understated because it is the equivalent of shutting off all of the power in a major city every year at New Year's. When 
cuando se habla de la 13 Bactún, o en la mayor parte de idiomas mayas es Oxlajuj Bactún, se habla de un periodo solamente. Entonces, este periodo está enmarcado dentro de un calendario que lleva el registro del tiempo desde una fecha cero hasta nuestros días. Este calendario se llama eh, Choltún o el eh, ordenador de los años. Empieza con días, días de 0 a 19. Luego vienen los guinales, que son ventenas. Luego está el tun, que es de 360 días. Y luego empiezan los múltiplos de 20. 360 por 20 son 7200 días. Esos son los catunes. Luego, 7,200 días por 20 nos da 144,000 días, que es un Bactún. Eso es lo que se registra acá. Aquí tenemos el número 13. El número 13 es el 13 Bactún. Luego aparece 0 Catún, 0 Tún, 0 Winal y 0 Kin. Entonces, esta estela hace memoria al día de la creación. El eh, día de la creación, de acuerdo a los cálculos realizados por los investigadores, es el eh, 11 de agosto del 3114 a.C. Entonces, la fecha cero es una fecha en donde nuestros abuelos dijeron, bueno, esa fecha es muy importante para nosotros y pongámoslo ahí. No quiere decir que sea el primer día. Clarifying the correlation between the Mayan long count, or Chiltún, and where we are today in Gregorian years has not been an easy task. One of the most accepted models is the Goodman-Martinez-Thompson model. Using the Julian day as a continuous count of days that started on January 1st, 4713 BC, we can calculate that there have been 584,283 days since January 1st, 4713 BC. However, the Julian place count has no year zero, so it's going from year 1 BC to 1 AD with no place count for zero. Once the Goodman-Martinez-Thompson mathematic model is applied, we can identify the Mayan zero date of 13.0.0.0 for Ahau 8 Kumku as 3114 BC. By calculating the year 1 BC to the year 0, it's actually the year negative 1 BC and so on. Thereby utilizing the proleptic Julian calendar, it can be calculated that the beginning of the long count was actually in 3113 BC, the widely accepted date historians use. ¿Por qué vas a, a medir cientos de miles de años si no tienes una conciencia clara de eso? Nuestra mente no tiene la capacidad de entender eso porque estamos pensando con la mente racional. Tenemos que trascender la mente racional para poder percibir eso. Tenemos que entrar dentro de, de esas medidas de tiempo gigantes que hacían los abuelos. The Mayan long count is not oriented toward an end. But as the Hap and Cholki have proven, it's about measuring cycles. However, in this case, these are cycles of an extraordinary length. So where did this whole doomsday prophecy come from? The Maya shaman I know well told me, why is it that you gringos are so worked up about the 2012 calendar turning over we know very well that it means that we will try to make there be a new beginning. We will try by our actions to make it a better world. And I thought in talking to the Maya shaman that that's not so different from what we do on New Year's Day, which is the end of a cycle, the end of the year. Mucho viene de, una, de un concepto europeo o estadounidense y cristiano. Entonces el cristianismo nos dice que hay un fin del mundo. Entonces el 13 Batún es el fin del mundo. Ahora se ha encontrado en un sitio que se llama Tortuguero, un monumento en donde dice que se completa el 13 Bactún, 4 Ajau, 3 Canquín. Y eso nos lleva 
al 21 de diciembre del 2012. Sin embargo, hay periodos mucho más largos que el Oshlahuj Baktun. Consisting of 13 Baktuns or 5200 tune years. Hay uh, Piktun, Kalaptun y Kinchiltun. ¿Para qué nos sirve a nosotros esa medida de tiempo? ¿Qué nos está informando todo, esta, todo, todo, todo este conocimiento de los abuelos? ¿Nos está informando la esencia que, que, que surgió su, durante ese ciclo? Que es una energía pues, que es en la que nosotros hemos evolucionado, esta, esta humanidad, esta civilización. Pero primero, hace pues, casi veintipico mil años, 26 mil años, hubo una energía que estaba relacionada con el elemento fuego y que estaba relacionada con la energía femenina. Luego vino el siguiente ciclo de 5200 años que estuvimos inmersos dentro de la energía masculina y del elemento tierra. El tercer ciclo fue nuevamente femenino con energía de aire. Y el actual ciclo estamos hablando de otra vez de energía masculina en relación al agua. Water is the element that abuelos point to as part of our humanity. An element that is present in caves for the Mayans. Places which are also portals to the underworld. Therefore, in the caves lives the god of death, Achpuch, along the side the water god, Chak, and the goddess of fertility, Ixel. To check the connection between the caves and Mayan spirituality, I went to Calchetoc Caves in Yucatan, Mexico, a sacred place to the ancient and modern Mayans. Nosotros sabemos que todas las cosas tienen un chajal, y entonces por eso nos tratan de retrasados, de anticuados, de primitivos pero sabemos que todo tiene un espíritu, quiere decir chajal, una esencia, un guardián de las cosas. The truth also applies to the caves. So before I enter, I have to ask permission to the guardians of the place. Once the guardians recognize me, I am then permitted to enter the cave with Don Rogelio, the guide of the place for over 30 years. Estas son las sartenecas para recolectar agua a los mayas. Es decir, todas las piedras que ven acá los mismos mayas lo tallaron y lo colocaron bajo de cada estalactita donde vieron que cae el agua. At the entrance, we find the water element, which is picked up by the abuelos because the origin is sacred. And before entering the cave, I met the goddess Ixel. It's easy to see the importance of the goddess Ixel in this cave, because during the cast war, the Mayans hiding in this cave looked to the goddess as a glimmer of hope for the continuation of their race. Cuando hubo la guerra de casas, toda la gruta, todo adentro, vivió mucha gente. Se calcula más de mil personas refugiadas adentro. Eso acá dentro de la gruta, vean. En el piso encuentras en todas partes pedazos de cerámicas. Ah, mira. Todo esto. Cerámicas que los mismos mayas utilizaron acá en que estuvieron refugiados. Uh -huh. Solo que los mismos enemigos de los mayas que lograron entrar, así molestos, todo lo que vieron en el camino lo destruyeron, lo rompieron todo. This déjà vu of scenarios, 
I understood clearly on my birthday, April 12, 2012. Here I am in the Yucatan, exactly 445 years after. The 16th century Catholic bishop, Diego de Landa, burned the Maya codices and all relevant records of the Maya. De Landa had been responsible for cruel inquisition techniques, not limited to torture and genocide, but nothing short of cultural annihilation. Quemaron todos los escritos de todos los registros en México y una parte allí nomás al otro lado del río. Quemaron todo eso. Se ordenó la religión. ¿Qué es lo que hacen los calendarios? Es enseñarte. Aquí en esta estela nosotros tenemos lo que los abuelos vieron hace cien, miles de años, cómo eran las conformaciones de los grandes ciclos. Entonces, del 2012 al 2026 pueden haber complicaciones y del 2026 para adelante muchas más fuertes y nosotros no hemos logrado estabilizarnos. Del siguiente ciclo de 13 es, el, es, es un ciclo ya relacionado con el elemento aire, que es con la mente, pero ya va a ser el aire combinado con el éter. Entonces, dentro de 26 años, eh, pues si la humanidad sobrevivió como tal, como está conformada ahorita, pues va a haber una conexión muy extraordinaria entre todos los seres humanos. Que viene ya no por masculino o femenino, sino que hay un balance de las dos energías y hay un nuevo elemento que va a ser el, el catalizador de los otros cuatro, que es el éter. Entonces, ¿Qué hay en el universo? Pues grandes cantidades de éter. Ether gases abundant in the universe have been studied since the first Greek astronomers as a universal bonding agent, an abundant source of energy that forms a network of molecular connections throughout the universe. This network was confirmed by quantum physicists when they went looking for the coldest places in the universe and detected an energy which was at a temperature of absolute zero. At that temperature, matter should not vibrate and produce heat. There's usually no recordable release of energy as molecules are tightly compressed at this temperature. This is a phenomenon they call zero point field, which means the particles cannot be isolated from each other. But what they found was the molecules were not releasing, but exchanging energy with each other in sub-zero space. These same ethereal molecules are within Earth and within us. As our planet passes through certain sectors of the galaxy with higher concentrations of this ethereal energy, in conjunction with a magnification effect caused by our proximity to other celestial bodies, the influence of these fields can be measured. In an essay, The Auric Timescale and Mayan Factor, Sergei Smelyakov and Yuri Karpenko conjoined this theory with the 26,000-year cycle known as the precession. This precession is measured as the time it takes for the axis of rotation of the Earth to make a complete passage oppositionally through the 12 signs of the zodiac, the Mayan equivalent of being the Oxalacatun. Smelyakov and Karpenko divided it according to phi in the Auric epochs of 5,200 tune years which is one-fifth of that cycle. In so doing, they discovered that these epochs were set by the Mayans according to the time they take to transition through these areas of energy, resulting in 12 periods of increasingly shorter duration, of which, historically, it was discovered the recorded events aligned with the development of stellar events, new knowledge, the arrival of spiritual teachers, wars, and also quick political changes and weather disasters, as if delivered on schedule. 2013 is the date given to the end of the 13th Baktun by Smelyakov and Karpenko, also being the beginning of increasingly short cycles of demographic and environmental changes that will affect our planet until 2050. These researchers agree with the abuelos 
that there are serious problems coming our way. And that's why. La espiritualidad de este tiempo tiene un nombre y es esa acción. Ya nos, ya nos podemos poner a meditar 20 años para alcanzar la iluminación. No hay tiempo porque ya estamos en la época de destrucción, de cambios, que si nosotros no evolucionamos rápido, pues nos vamos a quedar. It's been said that many of the uh, things that we attribute to the Maya must have come from aliens, and the reason for that usually is that the Maya couldn't have done all this by themselves. Who could have built these cities? Uh, the great explorer John Lloyd Stevens of the last century, the previous century, the 1850s, 1840s, was confronted with this question when he wrote in his best-selling book in the year 1841, Incidents of Travel in Central America, um, who could have built these ruins? The people here are in decrepitude. Uh, how could they have done it? And then he goes on and says, but I do think that most likely it was their ancestors who built them and who made all of these great achievements. I think he was right on with that, and I think that's where most of us stand today. But why do we resort to aliens? I think one reason is our techno-dependence. Uh, we cannot imagine that anyone who didn't have computers, iPads, cell phones, a highly developed system of computation could have been responsible for measuring the, the movement of Venus or the phases of the moon or predicting eclipses. But those of us who try to do these experiments without the use of any tech, that is, who do it in a low-tech way, will very quickly find, if we're patient, that yes, you can do all these things. So this resorting to the exotic, I think, is, uh, in, in addition to being a great story, uh, is also, I think, comes out of the uh, not unwillingness to believe that any culture so low as the Maya, uh, and here I think we place them below us, uh, could have done these things. And that's a mistaken notion. We seem to have a habit of enlisting the far away to get answers. We don't trust our institutions. We don't certainly don't look to Washington for answers. We don't look to the UN. Uh, we look farther away. We hardly even trust our own history. We don't even look to the great historical figures of the world. Si la sociedad no toma en cuenta lo que todavía tenemos por escrito en este lugar donde están los tiempos, donde están todo lo que es el cosmos, si no entendemos por ahí, no hay ningún rescate. Lo que nosotros estamos es llamando la atención de, de, de todas las personas, que se armonicen. Porque si la gente continúa en el, en el camino material, en el camino de destrucción, que es lo que ha provocado esta sociedad moderna, pues definitivamente las personas que no se quieran adaptar a este nuevo ciclo no van a tener nada que hacer en este mundo. So right now, Bakhtun is giving us another start and another possibility of doing it better. Tú, no, tú ves ahora la sensibilidad con la que nacen los, los, nuevos, los niños nuevos, las nuevas generaciones. Impresionante es la conciencia que tienen con la naturaleza, la conciencia ecológica y, y, el, y el conocimiento que traen. Ellos son los que van a vivir este, este cambio. Within every newborn soul here on Earth, there is an opportunity for humanity to change course in any direction. Anything is possible. And with the technology in place right now, the reality of a collective consciousness is just a step away. As we already have through the use of existing technology, a collective consensus. Interconnectivity on a scale never before imagined even by fictional writers and those who claim to have clairvoyant powers. Technology which looks more and more biological as it advances 
as it has already begun to transcend its mechanical limitations. Concept not lost on the Mayans, who skipped over much of the mechanical to focus their genius on mastering their own interconnectedness with nature rather than isolation from it. Through estimating the speed of exponential technological advancement, we can only say for certain that the technology of the future will be well beyond our ability to explain it. It will, in fact, seem impossible for anyone not immersed in the technology of the time to understand how it works. Therefore, it is clear that as more of us connect with nature, the cosmos and ourselves, it is more likely that we will be able to achieve the necessary evolutionary leap for humanity and our planet. This connection will allow us to find the ways to preserve our existence in a sustainable form, as symbiotic rather than parasitic to our host planet. Por supuesto que que ese es este is that es true? este is es that accurate? por supuesto estamos yes. en un cambio energético entonces lo importante no es descifrar las lo del conocimiento lo importante es vivir ese conocimiento. As it was in the golden age, Kirikwa was a meeting place for the priests who would reveal that the calendars were much more than a simple measure of time, but rather the ways in which they mark our life cycles and that of the cosmos. This ceremony brings about the connection of the two and will be held in just a few days from now. It is called the Great Fire Ceremony of Tikal, to which the Abuelas have invited me to join. In the meantime, I will return to the Yucatan Peninsula where other Abuelas have asked me to participate in the ceremonies that will endow me with a greater understanding of the Mayan worldview. to the UNAM, excited to learn more in depth about the Cholqui with Canic Estrada and Laura Sotelo. Dentro de la cultura de los Altos de Guatemala se han conservado de manera tradicional varios aspectos de, 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 de la religiosidad prehispánica. Uno de los más relevantes es el calendario de 260 días. Se piensa de que cada día es, es una fuerza espiritual. En Guatemala a, a todas las entidades metafísicas se les llaman Nahuales. Se dice que estos 20 Nahuales, que estos 20 señores de los días, son los que contienen la, las respuestas de todas las cosas de la vida. Cada uno tiene su especialidad. Entonces uno debe de buscar el día específico que trabaja sobre ciertos aspectos. Por ejemplo, hoy que es día cabal, su nombre significa como la aurora, el amanecer, lo temprano. Entonces, el día de hoy se buscan cosas que vean relacionados con el aclarar alguna situación de la vida. Ahora, por ejemplo, el día de mañana, que se llama Oshipkat, es un día que lo enreda a uno o que lo aprisiona a uno. Entonces, es un día adecuado para, con ceremonias, pagar de que uno no esté enredado. Uh, the anthropologist Barbara Tedlock tells a wonderful story about a young man courting a woman and he wants to propose to her, but he knows that he can propose only on the day one monkey, number one of 13, day monkey of 20 in the 260 day calendar. So the night before, the night before one monkey, he gets horribly drunk because he's anxious, sleeps through the day, wakes up and is told by his local day keeper that he has to wait 259 more days to propose. The point is that the rituals, many of them dictated in these written documents, these codices, are very, very prescribed. You only do certain things at certain times. Men do certain things, women do certain things, there are certain offerings and so on to certain deities. 
en realidad no hay como que un día puramente bueno y un día puramente malo. Depende del contexto en el cual se esté manifestando dentro de, de esta cosmovisión que, que rodea el uso del calendario. Por eso eh, el ajkej o el especialista ritual es la persona indicada que puede entender el sentido de que están teniendo los, los nahuales. Todas las eh, preguntas de una comunidad podían ser respondidas a través de una consulta, a través de un libro. El sacerdote consultaba el libro y daba respuestas. These books are the famous codices, made of bark crushed and folded, called Dresden, Paris, and Madrid for the cities in which they are kept. A fourth codice known as Grohler was published in 1973 by Michael Coe, but not yet accepted as authentic by the entire scientific community. Bueno, tenemos que señalar que los códices no son ni contemporáneos ni proceden del mismo lugar. Son textos sagrados y al parecer lo que contienen escrito son recursos de memoria, recursos mnemotécnicos, para que el sacerdote pudiera responder a las preguntas. Y hay algunos autores que piensan que son como pequeñas enciclopedias en donde se contenían asuntos de carácter astronómico, calendárico, de tipo general, por ejemplo, augurios para Año Nuevo augurios para ciclos de 20 años. Y lo más común en los tres códices son augurios diurnos para cada uno de los días del calendario sagrado de 260 días. As the night falls on Merida, I am eager to know more about these preset dispositions. I stay with Kanek to look deeper into the Dresden Codex for answers to never before ask questions. El asunto de estos almanaques es que están pensados en términos eh, de corto plazo. Y los ciclos están, que están relatando se continúan repetitivamente, pero en intervalos pequeños. O sea, no digamos de que aquí está relatado lo que va a escribir eh, pasa dentro de 500 años, ¿verdad? Sino está hablando de lo que, que acontece cada año. Entonces, de cierta manera, estas son herramientas prácticas con las cuales ellos pueden eh, acercarse a la influencia de los dioses en las faenas cotidianas que tienen, por ejemplo, la cacería, la agricultura. Pero no hay algo que, que pudiéramos decir está escrito a, para nuestra época, ¿verdad? Is there direct connection between these events described in the codices and the calendar, the way it's counting and the way it's written within itself? Ah, sí. En una de las preocupaciones de los mayas es registrar dentro del calendario de 260 días dentro del Solquín los diferentes eventos astronómicos y entender su ciclicidad y tomando como base el calendario de 260 días. Uno de, 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 de los ejemplos más recurrentes son las tablas de Venus, en los cuales hay una preocupación de, de los mayas por registrar los días dentro del Solquín en que aparecía Venus como estrella de la mañana para poder anticiparse a ciertas influencias eh, tanto benignas como negativas que podía dar Venus. The Dresden Codex has many other measures. Among the more recurring are the series for predicting 69 possible eclipses in a period of about 33 years. Also, some experts believe these calculations also include the 399 days it takes for Jupiter to make its journey around the Sun and the 378 day voyage of Saturn, among others. Can you tell us which other planet is recorded that brings the peace, harmony, and enlightenment? 
Bueno, es que ese tipo de, de, de augurios está más relacionado con, los, con, con, con las ruedas catúnicas. Eh, los catunes son periodos eh, que duran 20 veces 360 días, un poco menos de 20 años. Y tenemos documentos como los libros del Chilambalam, en donde se habla acerca de lo que se esperaba para cada, cada catún. Y expresamente hay algunos donde se dice que son épocas de abundancia, épocas de paz. Hay otros donde se dice hay épocas de guerra. Hay unos de, donde incluso se habla acerca de la llegada del cristianismo. Pero estos augurios no están muy relacionados con, con eventos astronómicos propiamente. Ahora hay algo similar, ¿verdad? Entre algunas comunidades mayas se escuchaba el asunto de que si en 1810 había, habido, había iniciado la guerra de independencia y en 1910 había iniciado la guerra de revolución, en el año 2010 tendría que ocurrir un evento este, similar, en, en tanto que había la repetición de estos ciclos. Y ahora ellos, eh, este afán de, de reflorecimiento de su cultura, eh, dicen que este es el Bactún en el cual el, los mayas van a resurgir. I have traveled to the small village of Akankeh, the home of Don Edgar. An old friend of the Guatemalan abuelos who has dedicated his life to conveying the Mayan worldview. Okay, money. A wonderful wind appears, and I really felt the emotion from the wind itself. And in that very moment of our meeting, I could feel something beyond the physical plane. Estás bien recibido por los abuelos acá porque sentimos como viene el aire. Están recibiendo. En esta parte. Combinamos lo que es planta con la cosmovisión maya. Kutsa, cabete le te le te cano, can tu laca. Tú me vas con ocho te lumo. Kuk askontik chane le chivo, wano kutsa que chivo, kuk askta chane le chivo. Y así seguimos en esto, en esto. Otra. Mm. Esta planta que le llaman el árbol sagrado, la ceiba. Se relaciona la planta con los cosmos, con el eje cósmico. Cuatro planos hay bajo la tierra, que es, que es el tronco, que es la raíz. Y, y el tronco, este, son cuatro planos sobre la tierra y la rama significa cuatro planos en el cielo. Cuatro planos en el cielo, cuatro sobre la tierra, cuatro abajo, unido en un solo punto, que hace el número 13. There is a belief that the Cibia tree can also be found in ancient Mayan cities where the sacred tree was then enclosed within the central pyramid, as it was a symbol for the cosmic axis to unite the three levels of the Mayan cosmos with the pyramid's four corners. It is time to visit one of the most famous Mayan cities worldwide, Chichen Itza. Chichen is the Kukulkan Pyramid, which is located in the center of the city, symbolizing the four directional divisions of the universe. 
there are four massive staircases with exactly 360 stair steps, one for each day in the Hob year. In addition, the axis through its northwest and southwest corners are orientated to sunrise at the summer solstice and sunset in the winter solstice. This provides the famous shadow of the snake from the upper temple, which descends the nine levels of the underworld, represented by the nine levels of the pyramid. By using the pyramid as a sundial and a solar calendar, the shadows cast by the pyramid itself were used to calculate, gauge not only the time of the day and season, but guidance to understanding the relevant biological timekeeping by which we live. But this is not just a massive sundial, but it is also a gateway to the levels of the cosmos. Uh, anybody who's been to the Maya ruins, uh, has taken the tour, knows that where the, you can go inside a pyramid, there's another one. There's a set of steps there, inside there another one. And inside there another one. And it, it reminds me of the little Russian dolls I have where you, you unscrew one and there's another one. Monkeys in a barrel is familiar. You know, and then you take another one and another one and they go down. And, uh, well, why do they do that? Uh, we might think in our practical way that it's a real estate problem. You know, they have a lot of places to build. Probably not true. I think this is very important. I think what they're doing is preserving their history. And the history is written in the architecture. Now, what do we do with our history? Back when I was a kid growing up in New Haven, used to go to the Howard Theater on Howard Avenue every Saturday morning. For 14 cents, I could see a bunch of cartoons and Three Stooges, uh, and I loved it. When I went back to my hometown some years later, theater had been torn down. It was a bowling alley that replaced it. 20 years after that, the bowling alley was gone, and there was a hair salon. You get the point. We do it with stadia. We take our big stadiums and tear them down and rebuild after 10, 20 years. Uh, but the Maya didn't do that. They preserved history. Uh, so that if you take a slice through a Maya building, you go backward in time, perhaps a cartoon or two, perhaps a ruler or two, because the rulers were very fond of rebuilding when they came to office. So, so a slice through Maya architecture is a slice through history. And the underworld those this area is riddled with vast caverns, natural gateways, leading to the Mayan underworld. I head back to Ixbaba, anxious to connect what I have learned both on the surface and underground with the higher levels here. Los poderes están estructurados debajo de las pirámides, debajo de todas estas gradas que se vienen de las pirámides, no son más que es la manera de cómo vivir. Finally, I arrived to the second level of the pyramid representing universe, the level of the origin of humanity, where I find the jaguar, the guardian of the four corners of our universe. Es Balam Kitsé. Balam quiere decir jaguar, el jaguar de la son sonrisa dulce, el del sol, guardián de la raza roja originaria de, de este continente. And on the inside of the wall of the pyramid, one can see a represented overworld. I find our creation, the sign of water from where the two snakes come out, that symbolizes our DNA a combined snake from our parents' DNA that joined at the two sides of the lower water flower, guarded by the secret jaguars. The pyramid tells us the story of 5,200 year cycle that just ended, wherein we were born of the water and we are protected by jaguars. And when we expire, we evaporate. To learn more about what the Yucatan Mayans had to say about the 13 Bactoons and the next coming cycles, I go back to talk with Don Edgar. In, in estos periodos, el gran temblor que estaban esperando, el temblor no se refería al temblor físico o químico de la materia de la tierra, sino que el temblor era del ser humano, era en el corazón. Por eso, en el 2012, cuando lo publicaron 
los grandes señores científicos comercializaron en parte de nuestra cultura. En nuestra cultura maya, el ciclo que terminó, que dice el 21, no concuerda con nuestros, nuestra, nuestro ciclo. 2014 es para nosotros la cultura maya, termina lo que es este ciclo a partir del 16 de agosto. ¿Por qué agosto? Porque el calendario no puede terminar en diciembre, porque en diciembre es el calendario europeo. 2014, más 52 años, nos vendría dando 6, 6, en el 2066 es el cierre de otro ciclo. A partir de, de estos 52 años, es una era de armonía. 52 años de amor, 50 años de desarrollo, todo esto. Pero debido a ciertos movimientos telúricos, la tierra ha perdido un cierto desequilibrio. Entonces es un poco difícil que haya una alineación a la perfección, como habían dicho nuestros ancestros. This really is a very important revelation. As Guatemala's abuelas, Smeliakov and Karpenko, Don Edgar, also see difficulties for humanity in the coming cycles. Concerned, I ask what to expect for 2066. Se teme a que, a que en el movimiento telúrico de, de, la, de nuestra madre tierra, que era un momento en que el polo puede reinvertirse. Entonces, al momento en que se reinvierte el polo, puede ser que esté más lento el movimiento de la tierra o puede ser más rápido. Entonces, eso va afectando lo que es el medio ambiente. Y lo estamos viviendo, ¿por qué? El hombre ha roto el eje cósmico. No cuidamos a la madre tierra. Lo que le pase a la tierra afecta al ser humano, afecta al hombre. Si no logramos el equilibrio, ya definitivamente ya nos va a ganar esta parte. Si nosotros damos una conferencia, si mi conferencia va a ser negativo, Influyo mi negatividad a todos. El amor es lo que debemos de infundir a nuestros hijos, a nuestros hermanos, porque es uno solo, es el universo. Todo eso es la energía. This trip through Yucatan confirms that the coming cycles can bring problems. Don Edgar gives us the new dates of 2014 and 2066, close to the 2013 and 2050 from Karpenko and Smelyakov. Suddenly, it becomes urgent to make change in our own life internalize the knowledge and learn to live with it. Next to the warm fire and the spirit of the abuelas and abuelas in the great Tikal, I'm hoping to close my cycle that started in Kirikwa and start a new one. I guess it's a lifelong journey that happened to bring me here to Tikal. After visiting other places that marked how our civilization has evolved. pyramids and these locations 
tell us the story. Es la casa del tiempo energético del cosmos. Eso es el Tikal, donde se estudió el espacio y el tiempo. Entonces, cuando se hace una danza, es para balancear la energía del corazón del cielo, del corazón de la tierra, Rukushka, Rukushuleu. Pero no es una cuestión allá afuera, sino es una cuestión también adentro de nosotros. Entonces, es una ofrenda al cosmos para el balance de la misma vida, de todo, del cosmos. Sound, music, and dance are so important in our lives, something that Mayans knew perfectly how to apply to the well-being and combining all other intention resonating elements in their ceremonies. In lo maya, la ceremonia is la cultura de vida. La cultura de vida para conectarnos directamente con las enseñanzas dejadas en cada lugar ceremonial. Una ceremonia es como agradecer, ofrendar o hacer un um, trabajo para que nos entiendan las estrellas, el sol. Para tener buena salud, buenos pensamientos interiormente, vibrando con los cinco elementos de la naturaleza. We've learned of five elements which create balance. We have gone through a total dominance of male after total dominance of females. So we are yet to see the balance between the two where is created without power struggle. And I think that needs to happen the sooner the better. Esas energías activan una sanación perfecto con el equilibrio perfecto de la naturaleza desde la dirección del cielo que es Dios, el, el, el hombre y la naturaleza. El balance de esos tres da la sanación y eso solamente se logra a través ya de las prácticas de lo que los, nuestros abuelos sabios mayas dejaron. It is here at the great fire ceremony in front of the majestic temple of the Jagora Tikal, where the time and cosmos were first aligned and studied. I and my journey. I'm just so happy that the words sometimes don't come out. The emotion is strong because you know you win a presence of ones that know you and you don't have to tell them anything. They know why you're here. The very act and journey of decoding back to, I think it tells us we have reached the era of our civilization that has it all. We have incredible structures, we have medicine, electronics, technology, internet, where the world is entirely connected. We are global. And yet, the message from them is, 
Our intent and our state of mind changes our environment. And when they speak that now it's the time to change our way of living, maybe that's the message. We do have the power of persuasion that comes from the power of intent. They're telling us, you are empowered and you can do this. So how about we create an era of abundance? And we start by creating abundance from us, from within us. I guess my journey has been long because not all was answered. But right now I'm more at peace that what I always believed somewhat subconsciously existed, it's presented right here and it's written by my answer.